Hi, in this video we are going to go over the solution of the problem 759 employee free time. Imagine that I have a scheduled time of a couple of employees. For example, employee 1 works between 1 and 3, 6 and 7. Employee 2 works between 2 and 4. And the third employee between, works between 2 and 5 and 9 and 12. And what, we want to know what is the free time when nobody is working. For example, if I sort these working times based on the beginning of each one, uh, each time, for example, 1 to 3, then 2 to 4, to 5, and put all of these arrays in a nice format, I can see that there are some em uh, empty spots. For example, between 5 and 6, we have empty spot, and between 7 and 9. So, for solving this problem, what we can do is that we go over each arrow, and we compare the beginning of the arrow with all ending arrows, and say, okay, here I have a beginning of the arrow, but the, this ending is at 5, and then I say, okay, this interval is an interval that nobody is working. Again, for the next arrow, I have the beginning of that, and I compare with the endings. And I say, okay, there is a spot here that between 7 and 9, nobody is working. So if we do that, the time complexity will be n to the power of 2, because we go over all of the arrows, and for the each beginning of each arrow, we are comparing to all of the endings. But technically, we don't need to compare to all of the endings. I just need to compare to the maximum, because that is giving us the correct answer. So comparing to this, this, it's not valuable. So I only need to compare to this. Here, max heap is very helpful and can save time. And if we use max heap, we can end up having time complexity of n like n. So this problem is very similar to the problem that we already saw. That was a problem meeting rooms second 253. So there is a video uh, for that in this channel that I put the link for that. So it's better if you start watching that video and go over that to understand the concept, then come back to this problem. Okay, let's start solving this problem. The first thing that I'm gonna do is because we are going to use uh, max heap, I'm gonna you import heap q. And then I'm starting writing the class solution. And I define the function, let's say employee free time. I get self and schedule. OK. OK, I'm going to put everything in a nice format as the above arrows I showed you. So for doing that, I'm going to define a variable called intervals and make that as an empty list and at the end I'm going to return this list so return okay just for now to run the algorithm then we change the return after doing that what we are going to do is that I'm going to put everything in a nice format in this interval. So I say for r which is the index of the rows and row in enumerate of a schedule and for c index of the column and the value that we get in enumerate of row. In that situation, I say intervals dot append line. Okay. In that, if we do that, we put everything in a nice uh, list. So let's get an instance of the class solution, and I can run s one dot employee free time schedule okay let's run it okay we can see we get this results here so all of them are in a one array so I put it here because I like to sort them in a nice format like here so that is simple we say intervals dot sort but I want to sort them based on the beginning 
so what I do is that I say sort key equals lambda x x 0 do that you see I have 1 3 2 4 2 5 6 7 and 9 12 you can also just skip the key lambda x equals x 0 because by default if I have an array like that so it's going to consider the first element as the item to be sorted so technically you don't need to write this section but it's nice to have it just um, to know what we are doing so after sorting that so what we are going to do is to define a list that is going to have uh, all of the things in our uh, all of the elements in our maxi. So for doing that, I'm going to call that list by capital H. That's an empty list. And then I'm going to assign to this list um, the first value. And the first value we are going to add is what? Is this one. Ending of the first arrow. So I'm going to say heap q heap push h and what we are going is intervals min 0 1 what is the interval 0 1 is this one 3 what is 3 3 is the ending of the first arrow we add that to our heap because I need to in a heap I need to have all of the endings because I want to return the maximum of that and as the default of the heap queue in Python is minim, min heap, so whenever we want to use a max heap, we just need to import the negative value of the values to the heap, and whenever we extract the point, we extract the negative of that. So in that case, we can easily turn a min heap to a max heap. So for doing that, I just put minus one times intervals to my heap. Okay. Then I want to have to define another value another list that I'm going to call that results that's just the empty for now so we, we will see how we use that okay now let's go and visit other nodes I go and say for I in intervals from 1 to the end because all of these things so we already pushed this one now we start from the second arrow to the end so we go from the intervals 1 to the end so it means that from here to here I go forward and say if I 0 what is the I 0 for example for the first one will be this is my i, this is i0. If 2, which is the end, beginning of a new array, is less than what we get out of the heap. So, we know that if I have that heap list, so heap 0 is going to give me the minimum value, so I just put the minus 1 times that, it's going to be the max value. If it is less than that max value, which is the case here, so I see the beginning 2 is less than the 3. So in that case, I just add that to my, um, I just add its ending to the heap. So I say, okay, in that case, I say heap q dot heap push h again minus 1 times i1 what is i1 i1 is this one so this was our i we compared i0 to the last ending and we said oh okay this 2 is less than 3 so in that case I just add 4 to the heap okay and whenever I add something to heap or I use something from heap I just put minus 1 okay so I have that one now I say else if reverse situation
greater equals if it is greater or equals what we do we come and we say okay that point that we had so I'm now I'm going to make that intervals that at the end someone asks us okay return all of the free intervals so this result is going to return all of the free intervals so I can return actually result here and here under the else if I say result dot append minus one times zero I zero so this uh, I'm this one that I just added to the result is going to be this value 5 to 6 it's going to be this value 7 to 9 okay and then I put again hip push to the my max hip so say hip q dot hip push oh I forgot q here and I say edge minus 1 times I1 okay so let's run it oops I have an error somewhere okay I forgot to be column here and here okay so you can see these are the intervals that we have empty spots 5 and 6 and 7 and 9 okay so let's see what we did let's uh, go over that again I got the schedule for different uh, employees so for example this was first employee this was the second employee. at the beginning I came and defined a list called intervals and here I put all of the values from all of the working hours into a very nice format intervals and then I sorted that based on the beginning values so to get all of these arrows then when we have that we go and add the first value first ending points this one to my heap because I'm going to make a heap that has all of the ending values because that heap is going to give me the maximum of them in a very fastest way that I can compare the beginning of the new arrow to that maximum and whenever it is there is this one is greater or equal here if it that is greater or equal so I can then say okay that is uh, something that I can return as a uh, value so actually I think that shouldn't be greater or equal it should be greater so I believe that this is correct whenever it is greater I'm going to return that thing to the my results if it is not greater or equals that is still not empty space okay so if we do that so we get the results that's the same thing okay so let's talk about the time complexity we have a for loop here so we have a O of um, N here also we have a uh, hip push and hip uh, which is the insertion so we have log of n here so in that case and also we have one sorting here which is in a base case scenario is a uh, n log n so that's gonna be n log n n log n here so at the end our time complexity will be um, big of O n log n so the time complexity is order of n log n so how about a space complexity so a space complexity we made one thing here so that was our list edge that stores all of the nodes in a maxip 
and if I store all of the nodes in Mac max heap so in a worst case scenario that is going to be order of n so a space complexity is order of n also the list results is not going to go over the n vari variables so both of them uh, as in worst case scenario it's going to be order of n so the space complexity will remain uh, less than n okay this is the solution of this problem uh, again the trick to use max heap is in Python so we only have min heap whenever you want to insert something to that like here I, I whenever I use push heap I just put minus one so you see push heap minus one push heap minus one to the value that I add to that and then I'm going to use it so whenever I get h0 which is going to give me the uh, root of the heap so I just multiply to one, minus one I just multiply to minus one that's it okay okay thank you so much for watching this video